can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. teaching on fighting the good fight of faith and um, we've discussed several things and tonight we'll just take another step forward but something Jesus said that's very important and I want us to look at it. it's in Luke's gospel St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 6. You ready for it? Yes, 
I'm reading from verse 47. St. Luke chapter 6 from verse 47. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I want you to notice exactly what he says and what he does not say. Verse 47 again. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He says, anybody who comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, acts on them, practices them, he said, I will show you what he is like, the one who hears and practices the word. He says, I want to show you what he is like. Verse 48. He is like a man which had built an house, a house, and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it. He's talking about the flood. It says when flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it. For it was founded upon a rock. He says, I want to show you the life of the man who comes to me and hears my sayings and does them. He says, he's like a man who built a house. He, he says here, that man dug real deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house, he says, it could not shake it. When cancer attacked him, it could not shake him. When the flu came against him, it could not shake him. See that? When heart trouble came, it could not shake him. When fear came, Sudden fear. Bible says, be not afraid of sudden fear. When sudden fear attacked, it could not shake him. Why? He said, for it was founded upon a rock. Verse 49. But he that heareth and doeth not. Now, I want to show you, he is comparing two kinds of people. A lot of times, this has been used in teaching sinners. But it's wrong. He's not talking about sinners. He's talking about two kinds of people who have heard the word. The sinner has not heard the word. The non-Christian has not heard the word. Now look at it. Verse 49. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation oh my goodness you see you're building your life every day you're building the house of your life every day you're building every day every day with the words that you speak with the things that you do you're building your life how did you how did you get to where you are today By the words you heard and put to work, the thoughts that came to you and you acted upon, that's how you go to where you are. So it says, But he that heareth and doeth not 
It's like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which he built it on sand. That's what he's saying. He had no foundation. Huh. Without a foundation built an house upon, upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently. The floods came. The stream beat vehemently against the house. Both of them faced the same situation. One fell, the other did not fall. Why? He said the difference was one was built on a rock. What was the rock? The doing of God's word. Both of them heard the word. The difference was one did the word, the other one didn't do the word. So the foundation was the doing of God's word. So you can actually tell about your life whether you're going to be a success or a failure. You can tell. You don't need somebody to prophesy and tell you what your future is going to be like. You can tell from the onset where you're going. Now, I made up my mind to do the word. And I can tell I'll always be a success. You see that? Because I made up my mind. So I'm constantly working on the solid rock. Building on the solid rock. Of the doing of God's word. Now, if you haven't made up your mind to do the word, failure is what's out there for you. There's no other way. When the stream of opposition comes against you, look, look, look what it says here. Against which the house, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. And it says, and the ruin of that house was great. You can tell that you're going to win. You can tell. You can tell your future. You can tell. Now, hearing the word and doing the word are two different things. What word are you going to do? You're going to have to practice everything the word of God says. Not some. Everything the word of God says. You don't choose to do some and choose not to do some. You do everything the Word of God says. And you know, you constantly produce more opportunities for yourself and more victories for yourself by knowing more of what God's Word says and doing more of what God's Word says. The, the more ignorant you are, the less of God's Word you're going to practice and the less success and the less victories you're going to have. So if you expand your knowledge of God's word, you are increasing and creating more opportunities for yourself to be victorious. Hallelujah. Praise That's important, right? Okay. So let's see another thought. Did you get this one? Yes. Did you think it was important? Yes. It sure was. Okay. First, I, I was... Um, I mentioned one of the a particular scripture um, Sunday morning, 1 Timothy chapter number 1. I want us to take a look at it. First Timothy chapter number 1. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm reading from verse 18. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. 
And I remember reading it to you from the Good News Bible. Is that right? I'd like to read it again from there for you. And I want you to notice how he puts it. He says, I entrust to you this command which is in accordance with the words of prophecy spoken in the past about you. He says, use those words as weapons in order to fight well. Use those words as weapons. You see, you use the word of God as weapons. Not what word? The logos, but the rhema. He says, take with you, what? The sword of the spirit, which is the rhema of God. The rhema of God is God's word that's spoken to you, that concerns you for the now, concerning whatever it is that you are concerned about. That word of the now, that personal word that God is saying to you now. In other words, he's said it, it's yours. It concerns you. God has spoken to you. That's your rhema. It says, use those words as weapons in order to fight well. Hallelujah. All right. Now, two areas I want you to look at and understand what happens to people um, in first... Turn, book of James, chapter 1. Let's look at that first. James, chapter number 1. We're looking at verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious. How many of you remember that? Great. If any man among you seem to be religious and breathed not his tongue... But deceiveth his own heart, deceiveth his own spirit, this man's religion is vain. It says if you deceive your own spirit, your religion is vain. You seem to be religious and you don't control your tongue. How do you control your tongue? You make your tongue say only what it ought to say. What it ought to say. Your tongue was given to you. But you got to understand this. See, there's so much religious teaching in the world. So when they talk about controlling the tongue, they're actually saying, don't say anything. They say, when they say don't talk anyhow, they mean, um, don't abuse people, don't insult people, don't say this, don't say that, don't, you know. Um, particularly using vulgar words, and that's about all they know about talking right. But there's much more about talking right. There's much more about talking right. Your mouth was given to you to create your life. Listen, where you are today is the life you created with your mouth. Now, it doesn't matter that you think uh, the economic situation in a particular nation may be responsible. No, it's not responsible. It's your mouth. It's your mouth. Your mouth is going to keep you where you are or it's going to take you from where you are to where you're going. He gave you a mouth not to eat bread and salad in a... In, in, uh, drink coke and ice cream he gave you your mouth for something better than that I wish you understand the importance of your mouth 
This is your mouth. <laughs> Let me tell you, your whole life is in your mouth. You better, you better understand it. Your mouth controls your life. The Bible says your tongue, the tongue inside your mouth, is like the little helm that controls the whole ship. Then how is a mature person described? He says the perfect man is known by his words. He says, you want to you wanna know a man that's perfect? He says, his words will be perfect. It's from his tongue. Why are you always visiting the doctor? Why are you always going for a checkup? Your mouth is a bad one. <laughs> you talk bad. That's why. As long as you talk the way you do, you're going to be going to the doctor. You're going to be visiting the hospitals. You're going to be going for drugs. Yeah, what if, what if I feel sick? Shouldn't I go to the doctor? How did you get sick? Well, I found myself sick. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. How did you get there? They that dwell therein shall not say I am sick. So how did you get there? He says, anybody who hears my word, my sayings, and doest them. He says, it's what? He has a foundation of a rock. Now you've heard it. They that dwell there and shall not say I'm sick, but you still say I'm sick. So who are you? You are like the other guy. Who, though he heard the word, didn't do it. So when the, uh, the stream of the flu came, it hit you and sent you to the doctor. <laughs> it's as simple as that. See, the word of God is so simple. You can, you, can, you can heap success upon success in your life. You can heap joy upon joy, victory upon victory, every day. Every day. Now, here's another thing that's so important. Maybe I should show it to you. In the book of James, chapter 1, let's see if we can rush this thing. James, chapter number 1. You there? From verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Did you hear that? He says every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Where is his lust? His lust is in his heart. It's inside here. He's drawn away. In other words, his attention is taken by his longing, by his desire, and he's enticed. So he's won over. He says, God don't tempt you. He says, you're tempted by the loss in your heart. Let's get it. Come on. He says, but every man, verse 14, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own loss and then ties, then when lost hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. Then he adds, verse 16, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Do not err. Hallelujah. 
He says, do not err, my beloved brethren. He goes on to say, every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variable and is neither shall return in. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. Then it says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of nothingness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But, but what? Come on. It says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. The change in your life can only take place according to the meditation of God's word that you have in your heart. See, you want any change, you've got to do it from the inside. You know, anybody can say, from today, I'm changing. You can only change for something else. But to be victorious, successful, as far as God's word describes it, it's got to be from the Bible, from the word. Meditating on it. Making decisions that are word-based. You make decisions that are based on the word of God. Let me explain that because sometimes some people don't understand when we say that. Now, if I grew up, see, some of us grew up with good character. And that's wonderful. We grew up with very beautiful attitudes and different things. And that's wonderful. For example, um... Uh, over here in the West, the men greet with a prostration. Okay? Or um, they also greet with a bow. Is that okay? And then uh, if they see uh, an older person come in, they get up to let the older person sit down. Is that all right? Now, that is beautiful. But God doesn't reward you for that. Because you were conditioned by the culture. Are you getting it? Now, now that's uh, nothing wrong with that. That's good. But you were conditioned by the culture. It didn't mean you were humble. Now, you meet the ladies and they go that way. Okay? Now, some of you will understand, you know, sometimes you do it before you even know what's going on. <laughs> now, that's beautiful. Good culture. But you see, all of this came from the world. You did it not because God said to do it, not because you knew that God wanted you to do it. You did it because you were cultured that way. Then when you start studying the word of God, you discover he asked us to have respect for seniors, to treat them right, to honor them. Oh, now you're doing it with revelation. So the next time you go like this, you know you're doing it right. You see that? Now, that is what you call building on the solid rock. Because now you're acting on God's word. You're bowing, greeting that way because of God's word. You see, it's coming now not from the culture in the world, but from the culture from God's word. So the word of God starts blessing you. Now remember what Jesus said. If you give something, if you give a cup of water to somebody to drink because he's a disciple, he said you will not lose your word. 
He said, if you give it to a prophet because he's a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. Hey, come on here. You, you understand that? But it's the same cup of water. Why? Why do you get a different reward from here and a different reward from here? Because of who you're responding to. So when you respond to God's word, you get what God's word promises. When you respond to your natural earthly culture, you get what it gives. So that's why he told us to renew our minds. We renew our minds with the word of God. We renew our thinking with the word of God. Hallelujah. You still there? Oh, this is nice. He says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. And he says, deceiving your own selves. That, that's deceiving your own selves. What does that mean? He's talking about your own spirit. Same thing he said in verse 26. Deceiving your spirit. Yourself. What's that self? Yourself is your spirit. Yourself is your spirit. That's the real self. Now, uh, sociologists say the self uh, is the real ego. And then they look at the, the, the soulish realm because they have no revelation on the human spirit. But the, the, the self of a man is his spirit, according to the Bible. It's the spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, first, that day to open the first Timothy before, and you did. Okay, this time, second Timothy, well, I'm still talking about uh, deceiving one's own spirit. How do you deceive your spirit? You can make your spirit believe the wrong thing and act on the wrong thing. You can deceive your spirit. Now, there's an important thing that every one of us needs to understand. Jesus referred to the human heart as the soil for receiving seed. You remember that? He talked about how the sower went forth to sow and how that the sower uh, sowed the word. And then uh, he let us know that the soil had to do with the human heart. Okay, so we sow the word of god into our hearts is that correct ah oh, that's a big one. Oh my goodness maybe we should look, look at that before we go to um second timothy would you turn to the book of mark mark chapter number four let me quickly give that to you so mark's gospel chapter number four you want to fight the good fight remember he said use those words as weapons so you can fight well. Doesn't matter what comes out against you. It may come against your business. Shaking it to its very foundations. But if you're founded on the solid rock, it doesn't matter how hard the stream beats vehemently against you, you'd know what to do. Let's look at this. It's in Mark's Gospel, chapter number 4. I want to read to you from verse 26. And he said, Jesus is talking, and he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground. So parakila hasta. Glory to God. Oh, I'm torn down on the inside. He says, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed shall spring and grow up he knoweth not how for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself ah! first the blade then the ear after that the full corn in the ear but when the fruit is brought forth immediately he put it in the sickle and because the harvest is come Hiya. 
He says, the kingdom of God works this way. He says, as if a man should sow seed into the ground and go to sleep. And the seed should spring up and the man doesn't know how. He says, because the earth, the ground, has the capacity, the ability to produce fruit of itself. He says, oh my goodness. The ground has been programmed to cause that thing to sprout and to grow. What is he telling you? He's talking about the kingdom of God. He's not just talking about your fam. He's telling you that your heart, your spirit, has been so designed and programmed by God to receive God's word and for it to get, cause the word of God to reproduce itself for you. And you go to sleep, just keep talking. You sow it in your heart. It will produce. Your heart has the capacity, has the ability, the competence to give to you in finished products what you've been sowing inside. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Glory to God. That's nice. Let me show you another thing. Ready to see it? Mm. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 16. Oh, glory to God. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 16. Have you seen it? Hmm. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. You remember the dialogue between Jesus and Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. He said, I will build my church. Jesus is building his church. Amen. amen. Verse 19. And I will give unto thee. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. <laughs> now what does it mean by bind or lose? The word bind, you, you want to get a better picture of it, you can look at the amplified version. Except that the amplified version um, gives it a little different connotation when you uh, look at the lower part of it. There he says, and uh, what, you, what you bind or forbid, he says, um, shall be that which has been bound in heaven. All right? Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but... Um, the point I want to make here is the word bind there actually means forbid. So don't have the idea that when you say, I bind you, that some spiritual cords are just roping the guy around. <laughs> That's not what he's talking about. He says, what you forbid, what you disallow. <laughs> Aren't you glad? He said, I give you. Like, did you notice what he said? He said, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. He didn't say, I give you the keys to the kingdom. The two different things. The keys of the kingdom of heaven, not the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What, what's the difference? Now, if I say that I've given you the keys to the office, it means you are outside the office. And so, 
you have the keys to enter the office. But he's not giving you the keys to the kingdom. Because you are in the kingdom. So he gives you the keys of the kingdom. So if I say I've given you the keys of the office, it means that all the rooms in the office, hallelujah, are accessible to you. So you can enter any room because you got all the keys off the office. See the difference? He says, and whatsoever you shall forbid, disallow in the earth shall be forbidden and disallowed in heaven. My goodness, I hope you understand what that means. No wonder he says that we are his ambassadors. I disallow poverty in this family. Glory. Say that in your home. I disallow hunger and lack in this family. And it shall be disallowed in heaven. Now, let's suppose for a moment, like I told you, the amplified version gives it, uh, renders it a little differently and says, uh, whatever you, you bind or forbid or disallow in, in the earth shall be that which has been bound and forbidden or disallowed in heaven. Well, let's assume that one is the correct one. Again, it's beautiful. If he says, what you disallow should be that which has been disallowed. So, well, i got to find out what's disallowed. There's no sickness allowed in heaven. So I disallow sickness in my home. I disallow sickness in my body. Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Hey, does that tell you something? You are responsible for the quality of life that you live. You're responsible. You know, a, a certain man was uh, upset when he was still in a meeting like this that he was responsible for his life. He got up and walked out. He said, what's that preacher trying to tell us? Trying to blame us for all the bad things happening to us? <laughs> I think he was just being stupid. He was still as guilty. You see, you're responsible. And it's good news. It's not bad news. <laughs> when you're told that you're responsible, it's good news. It means you can make a 180 degree change. <laughs> Say, wow, you mean I'm responsible? You mean I brought me here? You mean I made me this way? All right, that means I can change it. I can change it. I can change it. Oh, yeah. Hey! It's all change it. And remember this, when you stand out, sometimes it looks hard. It looks difficult. It's as though nothing is happening. You know, you're working. You say you're talking. You say, I've been talking. Nothing is happening. Uh -uh. The Bible says, when the cloud be full of rain. <laughs> so if somebody's asking you, if somebody's asking you, why isn't there a change as yet? You said the clouds are not full yet. I'm still sending some out there. When they are full, there'll be a saturation. And they'll empty themselves. He didn't say I'll go and empty them. He says they will empty themselves. Hallelujah. You are a success. Hallelujah. Yeah. Look, the future belongs to you. Look this way. You see, you take words. Don't wait for the devil. Don't say, well, I got my shield of faith. 
and I got my sock, and I'm waiting for the devil. If the devil shows up, no, don't wait. It's not the logos. The logos can wait. The rhema does not wait. Rhema is talking. And Rhema is talking now. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. How many of you talk today? Did you talk today? Did you say something right? Hallelujah. You know, some people don't believe this kind of things. That, um, anybody who doesn't believe this kind of things, you, you don't need to listen too hard. Just look at him. Examine him. <laughs> don't be carried away by his religiosity. Anybody can pretend to be religious. Remember that. Praise the Lord, brothers. <laughs> And anybody can become a critic of all others until nobody's as good as you. You can criticize other preachers in abused churches and make them look like they're, uh, they're all of the devil except you and your bunch. <laughs> that doesn't make you what you say you are. You get it? Yes. It's the word of God that changes things. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. You see, you, you can let somebody else criticize you for doing the right thing. Don't worry, because they don't count. Yes, Always remember that. Yes. Always remember that. They don't count. See? When push comes to shove, they will not be there. Yes. They will not be there. They will not be there. They will not be there to help you fight your fight. See? That's why if I want to read any book, I like to know who the author is. I don't read just every book. Some people read some books and say, guess what I saw here? Guess what I saw? They, no, this man is really telling the truth. Do you know him? No. <laughs> <laughs> Leave him alone. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. I got the life of God in me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Then you say this, you say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You say, I'm growing. I'm moving forward. Now, you know, what I'm talking like this, I am fully aware that some of you here may even be doing some wrong things. You may have cheated somebody today before you came here. I know. I'm aware. But you know what? Someone has rightly said it is better to light a candle than to curse darkness. You didn't get that. The Bible says, the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Not the judgment of God, but the goodness of God. If I show you the right way, I won't have to criticize you on the wrong way. You see that? Someone could have come in here. You're a thief. You steal. You cheat. You're a big thief. And you came into church today. 
And here I am talking about this kind of life. Because Jesus brought us a gospel. It's called good news. So we show you there's a better way. You don't have to steal from somebody. There's a better way. You don't have to attack someone and take his things. There's a better way. Why live a life that is full of turmoil, sadness, greed and lust? You're suffering. And you're angry with society. But there's a better life where you are excited about your life 24 hours a day you're so happy about what jesus has done for you you're so happy about the holy spirit that dwells in you and no matter what you face you just know you are a victor you just know hallelujah cheer up the word works hallelujah the word works it'll work for me you know, sometimes when I pray, sometimes when I pray, yeah, I pray and I say, Oh God, the word worked for the prophets. It worked for Jesus. It worked for the apostles. It's got to work for me. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. And remember this, God specializes in making champions he's made a lot of them think about elisha elijah moses david solomon come on think about all of them look at abraham joshua caleb these are mighty men barak samson jephthah then look at peter james John, Paul, Matthew. Hallelujah. He's not a failure. I said he's not a failure. If he succeeded with them, he can succeed with me. Shout amen, somebody. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lift your hands to what heaven and worship him. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.